What is up guys? Today I review Hey man, uh, can I come in for a sec? Um, I mean, I guess you can. Okay, cool. Are you gonna just stand there or what What do you want? Oh yeah, no, I heard this super funny joke the other day and I really think you're gonna love it. A, a joke? If you can't tell, I'm trying to record So two nuns oh, okay. were riding a tandem bike along Acorn Street in Boston. The nun on the back seat said, I've never come this way before. The driver remarked, it must be the cobblestones. Can we just roll the intro? What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I review my Polygon Vander T7. I have owned this bike for literally six months today, so I definitely have enough experience on it to provide a worthwhile review. So let's just start out right from the beginning. I bought this bike from Bikes Online back in March of 2021. It arrived and I put some parts on it that I knew I was going to need from the beginning. You know, pedals, tires, etc. The tires that came on it were actually pretty good for what I wanted to do, but they weren't tubeless tires, they weren't tubeless ready, so they had to go. When I got it all put together, it wouldn't shift. Long story short, the cassette was warped and Bikes Online did nothing about it. You can check out my video on Bikes Online down in the description. After I got that all squared away, I started riding trails and getting used to the bike. With the stock suspension on this bike, it is fully capable to handle almost everything you can throw at it. I say almost because the fork is okay, but not great, as well as the rear shock. They both barely had any adjustments and they don't accept any volume reducers. That posed a problem for me because I wanted to bring this bike to the bike parks so I can shred with my friends. I ended up upgrading the fork to a 2021 RockShox Yari with 160 millimeters of travel, 30 millimeters over what came on the bike. Yeah, I know, it's past the 20 millimeter roll, I don't care. This bike absolutely rips downhill, don't believe me? Check this out. The shock is still the same factory unit because it's an oddball size. There's not many shocks available for it, but with a little fine tuning, I got it to handle great at the bike park and on the local trails. The Vanders comes with a SRAM SX Eagle 1x12, the lowest grade one by drivetrain from SRAM today. Needless to say, it's crap. I swapped my cassette to an Annex cassette, obviously because it was bad from the factory. I wrote it like this for a couple months and then picked up a Box Prime 9 1x9. It has the same ratio as a 1x12, but with less shifting. It's fantastic, and you should definitely switch to Box products. I've had my fair share of wrecks on this bike. Oh, that hurt. <sighs> I hit huge drops, massive jumps, and never once was I afraid that the frame was going to break on me. Downhill bike parks are rough on your bike. I spend my time at Blue Mountain Bike Park, which has some sketchy trails to say the least. I don't have any dents on my down tube or any other parts of the bike. The frame has held up fantastic. The bars and stem are the perfect size as well. 780 millimeter bars connected to a 45 millimeter stem put you in that sweet spot to handle the bike like a pro. I haven't even touched these parts to be honest, I can't find a reason to upgrade them. The Vander comes with a 27.5 WTB wheel set, which makes the bike super snappy and playful. I have also upgraded my wheel set to Stan's No Tubes Flow. They are way faster and definitely way stronger. Knowing I was going to be doing downhill, I wanted something that I wasn't going to turn into a taco on the first big hit. But don't think that the factory wheels aren't good. I rode on them for probably four months and never bent them. The Vander comes with through axle front and rear. While not boost, they are very strong and you will have a ton of options out there if you wanted to upgrade later on. There is no dropper post from the factory. It is routed for an internal dropper though, which makes installation a breeze. That brings me to my next point. This bike doesn't have internally routed cables. That kind of sucks to be honest. My $500 Trek Marlin 5 is internally routed, but this bike isn't. 
Not being internal kind of makes the bike look messy. The cables are held to the frame with zip ties, which I am constantly breaking, leaving my cables and brake lines freely moving around. I feel like they could have definitely been able to, you know, make the frame internally routed at this price point. All in all, I am very happy with this bike. It does what I want, and I can definitely throw more at it without issue. A word of advice though, if you do buy this new or even used, make sure to grease literally everything. Bikes Online is known for putting bikes together incorrectly and not adding enough grease or any grease at all. There are numerous posts online complaining about creaks and pops, which is fixed by simply adding grease. Also, if you don't know how to set up a bike, pay your local bike shop to put it together for you. My bike came from the factory not shifting and the rear wheel needed to be trued up, but again, Bikes Online would not stand behind their product and only offered me $50 to fix the issue. Do I recommend this bike to someone? Absolutely. Whether you need it to commute, ride your local trails, or shred the downhill parks, this bike can be used for any type of riding you intend to do. For the price of $16.99 US, you really can't beat it. Definitely because they are in stock most of the time, unlike most other companies. Would I rate it five stars? I don't think so. Maybe four or four and a half because of some of the lower quality parts on it, but the parts to price ratio is pretty much up to par. If you're looking for a quality good bike on a budget, this is the bike for you. That is all I have today for this video. All clickable links down below in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.